Oi to Dubain. Hello, everyone. Let's start healing. I'm Adrian Murchison. Welcome to episode 20 of the Let's Start Healing podcast. Today, I greeted you with Hello, is everything fine in Brazilian Portuguese? Yes, in spite of the tragedies that seem to be coming one after another in our country. What we say is true. I truly believe in my heart of hearts. We have more in common than we think. And what we have in common can change the world. Our guest today is Andrea Smith, who is a marketing expert and the owner of the ADS agency here in the Atlanta metro area. And Andrea's spiritual path is similar to many of us in that she grew up in a very traditional religious experience. And the older that she gets, she and she's still a very young woman, but the older that uh, she's gotten, she has deepened her relationship with God and her two way communication with God. And she's going to share that with us. She's going to share a li- shed a little bit of light about that with us. And uh, she actually interviewed me and featured me on her YouTube channel where she interviews entrepreneurs. And you can uh, see that interview, which is a little less than 20 minutes long. You can see it by going to my profile on Instagram or also going to um, the Let's Start Healing Facebook page. And before we get started, and before you meet Andrea, I would like to honor uh, and acknowledge in my small way, Toni Morrison, who passed away today. And you know, when I saw her mentioned on Twitter, I saw she was trending, I thought she had said something profound. Uh, It just did not occur to me that she might have passed away. I mean, I just thought that uh, Toni Morrison was someone who was going to be here for a long, long time. Uh, She was 88 years old. And oh my gosh, uh, she is an American treasure. I know someone who is uh, beloved by all of us. And um, for me, uh, um, one of her books, The Bluest Eye, really has had an impact, I think, on my approach uh, to talking to people on this podcast, to talking to people in the book I wrote uh, several years ago on relationships. Um, The Bluest Eye, because the characters in her book, some of them were so cruel and I formed, at least I thought so at first, and I would form an opinion and then um, Tony would take you into their story and what made them who they are from their childhood to adulthood and how they evolved through hurt and pain to come to treat people in uh, ugly ways. And it, it gave me such a perspective. And I'm already um, an empathetic person by nature, but it really made me, it helped me to become curious about people and what they think and how they feel and how they came to be who they are. And I read that book before I uh, started developing questions for the interviews for the book that I wrote on relationships between black men and women called Colliding on the Road to Happiness. And I'm one of millions that she is an inspiration to and I just uh, wish her Godspeed. I keep her beloved family and friends in my prayers and uh, say, I love you, Toni Morrison. So Andrea Smith is here to talk to us today. And uh, Andrea has such a lighthearted spirit. I'm looking forward to you getting to know her. So let's meet her. Let's get started. And let's start healing. Welcome, Andrea, 
Hello. Thank you, Adrienne. So glad to be here. Oh, thank you so much for doing this. So I'm excited to share your story with our listeners. Tell me a little bit about you and your spiritual path and your background. Oh, wow. Yes, my spiritual path. So, um, you know, we grew up a team of a team, so to speak, of four girls, um, four sisters. Yeah, all girls and um and lucky, lucky, fortunate to have both parents in the household, which was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and my dad, you know, was just this only testosterone in his face. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he loved that. <laughs> that was quite interesting. I know. I know it was interesting for him. He did pretty well, though. Um, and so we always grew up in church. We were raised in the AME church. Mm-hmm. Um, so African Methodist Episcopal. And did that forever. We went to YPD, which is their young people's division. Mm-hmm. Went to all their conferences all the time, all their VBSs, <laughs> Sunday school, just about every Sunday. Mm-hmm. We never got to miss church, hardly ever, with, with rare exception. Um, and then, of course, we also have um, our grandparents who are in Alabama. So now when I go home, it's to Alabama. Um, and they had a, an even older school church. Amy Zion. <laughs> I know. So just throw that Zion in there. Yes. You automatically know. Like, okay, we know where we are. <laughs> and they had, um, that was where we always had to do like our Easter Sunday speeches. And they were never simple. They were never like, like lots of other kids got to do. I'm so happy to say it's Easter Sunday day or something. You know, so <laughs> cute and little like that. And we had like, 12 stanza long poems we had to memorize like the day before as we get there on a Saturday all the way over the river and through the woods to Mm -hmm. literally to grandma's house (laughs) and then she would greet us with our 12 stanza long poems and say okay you're gonna know that for tomorrow Mm -hmm. and so that was spirituality so to speak and church growing up Uh, You know, which I don't know many kids who love church growing up. Um, Other than now, they make it so fun. You know, um, my my little niece and nephews just adore their adore their church. And yeah, some of the stuff that used to come out of their mouth, I would be like, oh, my gosh, what (laughs) are they teaching you? Like, that's amazing. It's pretty like profound. Some of the stuff they they are learning, um, which is pretty amazing. So if it if it's fun and it's profound, you know, it's working. I'm all about that. Right. Um, but most little kids didn't love church growing up. Um, you know, they just, it was something you were made to do, not something you voluntarily did. Uh, so I would say my spiritual journey, I think, and I think a lot of people's maybe, you know, maybe you don't really hit it till you're on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I think it's so valuable, you know, cause you do pick up nuggets here and there, whether you went to a really fun church, like my little niece and nephews are, or your traditional churches, something in there tends to stick. Um, you know, and just like they say, train up a child in the way they should grow. When they get old, they'll not depart from it. Mm. Um, it's very true. So even when you have that freedom and you don't have to be in church, um, I think most college students and beyond at some point remember those roots and they come back to it on some level, even if they're not, even if that doesn't mean you're regularly attending some service somewhere, um, you know who to call on when when ish hits the fan, I'll say. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, you know, all during college, um, I think I think that's when you really meet God. You might have some encounters as a young child and, you know, and, and I think you should. And, um, you know, the little children should not be denied that opportunity to encounter spirituality on their own. But I think you that relationship continues to grow the older you get and the more you go through. Um, the more you learn where that source of power is that you can lean on. Exactly. Um, so that's where I would say, uh, you know, through college in my twenties and even now, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, knocking on 40, um, and as a, as an entrepreneur, you know, definitely, definitely always need that, um, spiritual base even mm-hmm. more so now I would say than ever. So yeah, I think it, we realize that it's, it's some, something else is getting us out of the situations we get ourselves into exactly <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> somehow the babies and fools get protected yes <laughs> count me among me among the foolish <laughs> many times yeah <laughs> so how would you describe your relationship with god now 
<sighs> now, um, I think the latest and greatest, we were just uh, talking about that book I was reading, The Miracle Morning for Entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and it forces you to do meditations every morning. And I say force because it's a part of what they want you to do. Uh -huh. um, stillness, they call it, and, and meditation is a big part of that. And I think most people recognize meditation or stillness is good to do and important, but we often don't just because we're like, oh, yeah, some other morning when I have nothing to do, <laughs> right. which is never. <laughs> you know, when I have nothing to do and nowhere to go, which mm -hmm. is never. Um, it's easy to not get into that. And it's easy to say, oh, prayers, you know, you kind of do it in your head, but not really. It's you kind of get lazy with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say doing practicing that miracle morning right now has been it's changing my life I literally just posted that on my Instagram sure. um, meditation is changing my life right now mm -hmm. and it's you know at, at the most I might spend 20 minutes doing it mm -hmm. um, of an ideal 60 minutes of a morning practicing this savers acronym they do in this book I'm reading um, but even the 20 minutes, even if, if it's 20 minutes or it's six minutes, it is much needed time with God that, I, you know, I think we feel guilty at some points if we've had a relationship with him. And then, um, you know, however you regard yes. God, yes. if you've had a relationship and then you've clearly neglected it for mm -hmm. quite some time, you're mm -hmm. like, God is there. God knows my heart. Yada, yada, yada. And really, we've actually kind of neglected that space in our life. And that can, I know for me, if I ever get in that space, then I I, I might procrastinate even more going yes. back because I might feel guilty. Mm -hmm. But I know that uh, when I ha when I spend that time, like you're describing, it definitely impacts my day. Mm -hmm. And then if I don't do it uh, now, I'm at a point where if I don't do it, it feels I just feel I don't feel good inside. You feel off. I feel, My day feels I feel, off. Yes, yeah. I feel really off, and I just want to get back, you know, to it. So it's it is it it's it's like a completion sort of. Yes, so agreed, and so I'm I'm just like you now, you know, and I'm only <laughs> sadly I'm only like a week into this thing, so <laughs> it's it's been a new revival to bring meditation back into my daily practice, but. um even with that short amount of time, I'm just like you. Like if I miss it, mm -hmm. then I'm like, something's wrong with my day and my day doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. um, but even before reading this book, I picked, I like to pick a word for the year. Mm -hmm. And so my word, and I like to, I would love for you to come on. Um, we do like a live, a simple New Year's Eve live Facebook thing. And we just encourage people to come on and tell us what their word for the year is going to be. Oh, so, that's beautiful. I know. So you have time now to think. <laughs> yes. Because if you catch you on the spot, you're like, oh, my gosh, what should my word be? Yeah. You know, it's so, such a commitment. Um, but last, last New Year's Eve, I picked the word grateful. Mm -hmm. And it's because, and you probably know these people, hopefully love these people. Uh, but Brene Brown is such the big vulnerability yes. expert. Uh -huh. Something she said made me really choose that word, and it's because she said she studies joy, people who have an immense amount of joy, people who are very successful, yada, yada, yada. And she said the people who have so much joy, um, it's so inextricably tied to gratefulness that she won't even talk about gratefulness. She won't even talk about joy now without also talking about gratefulness. Mm -hmm. They're so tied together like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And um, for that reason, I was like, ooh, man, it, True enough, you know, we all know gratefulness can be powerful, but for that reason, um, and I think I might have picked this up from somewhere else, but I started doing a grateful journal. Mm -hmm. I'd done one in the past, but, you know, kind of sporadically. And so I just said, okay, grateful is going to be my word for the year. Mm -hmm. Every night I'm going to sit down and think to myself, what are three specific things I'm really grateful for today? And, um, and Adrian, it never ends up being just two. <laughs> I know. It's always like, you're like three and then it's like, dead. it'll be, it'll be when I'm like dead tired. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh man, oh yeah, I got to do my grateful journal. And I, that similarly, I feel bad if I don't do my grateful journal because I kind of look forward to it at the end of the day. Right. Even when I'm like dog tired, I'm like, no, I got to do it. And I'll end up scribbling like 10 things easily, mm -hmm. if not more. Um, there's just so much and it just changes your whole day when it you does. start looking at it like that. It does. Especially if, uh, I know for me, if I'm in a space, you know, if I'm concerned about something, I'll try to shift into what I'm grateful for. And it just kind of moves me forward. You know, mm -hmm. it kind of shifts me out of that that mindset. Yes. Yeah. Steve Harvey. I just saw him. Um, 
a friend of mine, because they know my words grateful, <laughs> <laughs> they sent me a Steve Harvey video and um, it was all about gratefulness. And he mentioned the same thing about how you can totally change your whole mindset if you just take a moment and think, mm -hmm. um, you know, if something just negative just happened to you or something bad is happening in your world. If you take a moment and remember things you have to be grateful for, which he was like, without even knowing you, I can tell you right. 10 things you should be grateful <laughs> for right now. Right. Um, he was like, that's enough to change your mood and change your mindset, even in that moment. It is. Um, it is. So I love that. It is. You know, when I was on my uh, way to see you, so I'm on my way out the door and I forgot something. So I have to go back in and get it. So then I get in the car and I'm putting my stuff in the car and my keys fall between like the passenger oh, seat oh, that's and horrible. the center, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, I said, really? You know? <laughs> and so I just said, let me just be calm. They're here in the car. It's not like I lost them, you know? Yeah. And so I got up, I walked to the, uh, the passenger side. I found the keys pretty quickly and I just said, thank you, you know? And, and it did help me to not feel frazzled. Yeah. You know, to not feel like, oh, you know, I'm driving down the road feeling yeah. fried. It helped me to just let it go, you know? Exactly. And that, <laughs> I love that, you know, because um, you can choose to be frazzled, like you said. Yeah. And, you know, that's easy to do. Yeah. Um, especially in Atlanta traffic. <laughs> I mean, you could... I, there's so much to complain about if you want to, in Atlanta traffic. <laughs> but rather than complaining, mm -hmm. you know, if we can focus on, you know, just like you did, you turned that whole little situation around. And you said, at least I know where they are. Right. At least I know they're not far. I can get them, you know, and that kind of thing. And it's fine. And you got here on time. Right, anyway. right, right. You know, <laughs> so just remembering all the things that you actually have to be grateful for, even when you're in a potentially negative moment where you could be pissed off for a second, mm -hmm. um, bringing yourself back to, okay, can't change it. Let's focus on what we can change, move forward. It's so, you mm -hmm. know, so good to do. I think that's inspirational too, to have a word. Uh, we have a mutual friend, yeah. Jazz Jones. Yes, and Jazz. I remember her word uh, one year was available. I always remember Ooh, that, that's good. that she was just going to be available. Mm -hmm. And um, not long ago, actually, it was last week, I was thinking about um, Shonda Rhimes, my year of yes. Yeah. And I really decided, you know what, I think I'm, I'm going to this, even though we're in practically in August, my word's going to be yes, which could mean saying no. Yeah. You know? Because <laughs> you're saying, by saying no, you're saying yes to something else more. Exactly. That is more important. So I think that's so inspirational. That word grateful is is huge. Well, I'm curious yeah. about that year of yes. I hadn't heard of that. Oh, yes. She wrote a, a, she wrote a book, but I listened to the audio. This was, I would say, 15 or 16. I listened to it in 16. And it's really good. She She talks about how it was really a transformation for her. Uh, of, you know, being able to say no, being able to making things a priority. Like she was a single mom mm. and, you know, um, Shonda Rhimes was a single mom. Mm -hmm. huh. Yes. I don't know if she is now, but she was at that point. Yes, <laughs> and, uh, <right. laughs> and, you know, just having time for her daughter and, you know, the demands and, uh, yes, it's, it's a very inspirational, uh, book and audio book. Yeah, <laughs> I have to remember stuff like that. <laughs> year of yes, mm -hmm. my year of yes. Shonda Rhimes. So, um, so you're tell me about your business. You have a marketing firm. Yes, uh, the ADS Agency uh, was started two point seven five years ago. Really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it was a a dream business. I did not envision myself doing this until I was well into my 40s. When I was in my 20s, my young 20s, I thought, oh, yeah, that, you know, when I know it all, so quote uh -huh. unquote, I'm doing air quotes, like yeah. when I know it all, when I've had all this experience and I'm then so knowledgeable. Yeah. And, and I kind of thought, well, I'm going to have a very successful career doing marketing or whatever. And when I'm done, um, you know, I'm going to retire early and that this will be my fun project that I just do just for fun, just to say I did it and, you know, have a little boutique agency. Um, that opportunity came earlier than I thought unexpectedly. 
And I was here in Atlanta, fresh off the boat, so to speak, in Scotland. <laughs> now, um, put a pin in that for a second. Yes. So you mentioned that to me offline before. Were you in Scotland for like a year or yeah. years or what were you doing there? It was a year. And that was another crazy girl. We could talk about this all day. We had <laughs> another crazy thing that shouldn't have happened and it did. Uh-huh. And um, I was in Columbia, South Carolina at the time and at this company's um, North America headquarters, but their global headquarters was in Scotland. Were you in a marketing position? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and I thought nothing of that role. Uh, I, I honestly, you know, between us girls and everyone listening to podcasts, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, I moved there for a guy who I thought, you know, had a pretty solid shot at getting married to. And were you, were you still with the firm in Scotland? Yeah. Or you left the firm? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so I just found this job. I was looking for any marketing job. He uh-huh. really wanted me to move to Columbia. At the time, I was in Greenville. And, um, you know, so he pushed so hard for it. And I was like, this guy's so serious. I was like, maybe I really should look into it. And um, he was just really pressing it. So I just tried to find any kind of job um, in my field. And it was not a sexy title. I was not happy with the title. It was like marketing specialists marketing communication specialist, which I was like, oh, that sounds so <laughs> contrived. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, or like, you know, like not too important. And I was like, well, whatever. You know, at that point I was like, it pays me the basics of what I need to be paid mm-hmm. and it gets me to Columbia. So I'm going to do that. And, uh, five weeks into the job, a VP of the company that I'd randomly had to deal with for a nothing project, uh, just the most menial task ever. I was doing updates for the website and I was told to talk to him for some stuff. And we were talking back and forth and he ended up talking to me about mergers and acquisitions he was involved with and how that related to branding um, and some, you know, kind of struggles he dealt with trying to get cultures shifted and all that when you're taking over another company, you know, getting people to think in a new mindset of the company. And, uh, you know, so we just had some pretty nice conversations about that, but not too long. And um, anyway, he ended up calling me to his office and was like, uh, hey, I almost thought I was in trouble. I'd only been there like five weeks. I was like, why am I getting called into his office? And um, he said, there's a position opening in five minutes and I need you to apply for this. Uh, and it ended up being a project management role for one of the global acquisitions. And I was like, you do realize my job is marketing, you know, like kind of project management. Not exactly. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. it's not like I have a project management certificate. I, I was very well aware of people right. get certified in right. this stuff. And uh-huh. that's not me. I, you uh-huh. know, I'm no expert at V lookup tables and pivot charts mm-hmm. and all. Like, so if that's what you're expecting, I'm sorry. And he was like, no, no. He said, I like your attitude and I like the fact that you pay attention to detail and I need someone like that right now on my team, you're it. So he's like, anything that you need to be taught, I can teach Mm -hmm. you in this role. But he's like, you can't teach attitude. You can't teach, Mm -hmm. you know, um, that extension to detail stuff and all that. So that ended up turning into through a weird sort of turns into that role in Scotland. The lady who was a global branding director was pregnant at the time and needed someone to cover for her. And a colleague on the job was like, this is right up your alley. You need to apply for it. And I was like, why? Because, you know, same thing with my business. I was like, people told me, um, you know, I was looking just for my next job. Mm -hmm. And they were the people I'd met here in Atlanta. Same thing. They were like, you should just start your own thing. And I was like, why? No. (laughs) (laughs) I like my bills. I like lights on. Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, I view both of those circumstances, you know, to your point about spirituality and your growth in spirituality over the years, I viewed both of those things as, you know, really God saying, this is a crazy door. I'm asking you to, I'm bringing it to you on purpose and I'm asking you to walk through it. Mm -hmm. And if you would, you trust me, I'm bringing it to you for a reason and trust me, walk through it. It makes no sense. I know it makes no sense. And that's why it's going to be great. You know, and so um, did you have a awareness of that at that time um, that or is it now that you can look back and see that or was it that you there was something in you that trusted, even though you might not have been as clear as you are now? Yeah, I definitely think. Yeah. Hindsight's for sure. twenty twenty. <laughs> but in those moments, and I can vividly remember to this day, you know, like, Andrea, why would you do that? You're going to look so stupid. 
why would you apply for a role in Scotland? That's so stupid. Like logically, it makes no sense. Why mm-hmm. wouldn't they just use someone that was already there? That's what I would do if yeah. I were in their shoes. You know, like why would they bother bringing an American all the way over yeah. for something somebody else probably there could already do? Mm-hmm. Um, and what was so interesting is, you know, I just started reasoning to myself and the hindsight stuff showed me later, you were the only person in that company with a marketing background who was uniquely positioned that happened to get that merger acquisition experience because of that VP guy um, I was telling you about. And it ended up like uniquely, perfectly positioning me. I was like the only one in the company with that experience at that time. Um, But to your point, like in those moments we had to make the decision, did I know all that? No, it was really just like very limited information and kind of a whirlwind feeling like, should you do this? Should you do this? And a lot of fear can creep in in that yeah. moment, you know, like, oh, no, that's going to look, you're going to look stupid. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> something's going to really wrong happen, you know, or whatever. Um, all kinds of stuff go through your head that are just fear driven. Uh-huh. And something did say, trust it. You know, like, what's it going to hurt you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I brought it. It's It's here for a reason. What the heck? Why the not? Why not? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and a little bit like that, too, for the business uh, was not going to start this. And um, a guy that I advised before, you know, just simple, casual like this over coffee. They know that I was a marketing director for a company and they were like, help me, you know, advise me on my business. And I would give them advice, you know, just in my other role. And they knew I was looking for my next role. They were like, please do this. Please start your own company. Like, please do your own thing. Wow. That's That's, yes. That's affirming. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They were like that. And I was, and I was, again, I was like, bills. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I want bills paid, Mm -hmm. you know, and that very first client was the one that kept, kept on me and said, please, for the 50 millionth time, Mm -hmm. please do your own thing. Because he would, he was going to be your client. No question. Yeah. He Mm -hmm. was like, I'm going to, I'm going to be your first client. Tell me what to pay you. And um, and that was easy enough to say yes to because it's money while you're looking for a job. So mm-hmm. who can't use that? <laughs> so uh-huh. That was easy enough to say yes to. But it was more so in January of that year. That was November, December. An even bigger client came forward and said, what are you doing now? I said, oh, I'm looking for my next job. But I started this company. I've got like one little client in, you know. That's I forgot that on the side. And they were like, I need you yesterday. Here's my five companies. Tell me what you can do with them. <laughs> that is the stuff that started paying the bills. So by the all my HR friends, you know, who were like, they knew I was looking for a job too. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Angie, got to buckle down until January. You know, so I, they got my mindset right, you know, because most budgets don't start opening back up until January. So January rolls around. Sure enough, another great roll came my way um, it was with intercontinental hotel group the lady loved me i loved her we did several chats together um and it seemed like i was a shoe in for it and it would have been another global role it would have been in branding again and so i'm like kind of getting excited about it a little bit looking forward to it so you and, did interview for it oh yeah i did mm-hmm. um and you know even though i had this other client stuff happening in the background uh-huh. um which i was just kind of going to figure out as they went along uh-huh. And so at last minute, that lady called me up and she was like, I'm so sorry. She was like, I was really looking forward to working with you. And we had an internal candidate pop up and they have to take precedence. You know, like they know the brand, yada, yada, yada. And um, in that moment, I had so much peace because I already knew Uh this. It had already been proven to me. And so that for you. That was the affirmation thing where, mm-hmm. to me, that was God saying, I get, I'm so glad I get to be on this podcast because I never get to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> that, to me, was God saying, now I'm giving you peace because you know you can go back to that world. You've got the capability. I've given you all the expertise. You have all the skills and knowledge. You can do that if that's what you want and, you, and it's there for you mm-hmm. should you choose that path but I'm showing you another path. Mm -hmm. And should you choose to take that? I think this is where you should go next. Um, So by then that was kind of the, the message I needed to hear to say, okay, I'm not rolling in the dough right now, but is it possible? Can I see the light that it can make it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, And so haven't looked back since then. 
that is beautiful. I'm I seriously, I felt I was going to cry for a minute there. <laughs> I'm serious because, <laughs> because it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. But you have a passion. You know, I understand it because I, I relate to it. There's a passion and it's there as well. I have to keep a roof over my head. Mm -hmm. But then there's this passion that's alive in you. And so it's like your spirit versus your head. <laughs> yes. And, that, and that's what's so difficult. And that's the trusting factor. The little yes. leap. It's a literal leap mm -hmm. of faith that is that you're being asked to do. Um, and yeah, I, I have been there <laughs> more times than I can. So, uh -huh. you know, when you talk about spiritual growth, those were growth as I view growth moments for me when you're essentially being asked to really trust God, you know, it's, it's one thing to say that, oh, trust God. Yes, I, of course I trust God. But to be in the moment where it's that serious mm -hmm. and it's your potential livelihood or the direction of your life um, or where you'll go next, the legacy that you leave, all those big important things. Um, and he's saying, trust me. Mm -hmm. Even though in the moment <laughs> your family may think it's stupid and your friends might be like, what the heck? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, we're, <laughs> we are growing on our little tight relationship. <laughs> well, um, so describe what you do in your business for a big client and a smaller client. What do you do? What I've always done, and this is what I'm so comfortable in and what I feel is like my passion area, what I can really help people with. So many people, whether they're the big, huge companies you know, like the ones in Scotland that I've dealt with or our solopreneurs, many of our friends we know who are trying to figure out their business and how to grow and scale it and all that wonderfulness. Um, what I've always done is kind of come in, see the situation for what it is. You know, where are we right now? What have we tried? And what's the vision? Like, where do you want to go with it? Um, and what are your goals, real business goals for this year? When you want to boil it down to it, What's the revenue we've got to hit? What's the, what are the things that you really want to accomplish in this year? Um, and then we use that to say, okay, this looks like the path forward for mm -hmm. you. That makes sense for you. Whether your budget is $200,000 with a big company or millions or more. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're here and a lot of people don't realize the power of their own marketing spend, but if you really added up all the dollars and pennies you spend throughout the year, mm -hmm. you know, you probably spend a, a good couple thousand. Most small businesses at the end of the day, they may not attribute it to marketing, but we help them figure that out. So what's the reasonable spend? Should you be spending um, 2K on all new fancy equipment for your stuff? Or would that be better spent towards your goals of awareness um, or tracking down the um, the target audience that can really attribute to your bottom line? Mm -hmm. And so those are the things, the kinds of conversations we have. So we pull that plan together for the year. Uh, so we say, okay, through now to the end of 2019, plus now we're talking about 2020, which should be a great big year for everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm counting on a breakthrough year for so many people in 2020. Uh, what does that plan look like going forward? And then breaking it down to the tactics, what is needed to get there. So is that, do you need the brand refresh or can that hold off for a few years? Um, how's your messaging? Is that resonating right? Is it hitting right with your, with your target audiences? Um, do we need to get into social media and which platform heavier? Um, if you're doing a podcast or YouTube, how can we maximize that so that, you know, maybe your, your big goal is to get that message out there and to, you know, become known as the go-to for your particular topic and expertise area. You know, all those things are what we consider, um, and there's so many tools at our disposal that we can use once we know what that path forward is. So mm -hmm. my little superpower, I feel, is <laughs> helping people get some clarity around mm -hmm. that space because mm -hmm. there we're so inundated with so much, you know, email. Now there's Facebook chat bots and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff we can get into and dive into. But what really makes the impact and makes sense for, for us and our business right now with the goals we've got and the potential budget, talent, resources we've got. Um, that's like my little superpower. <laughs> Pull it together and then let's make it happen. So you help. It sounds like in a big way you help people to focus. Yes. And, and simplify and mm -hmm. yeah, make it not so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if there's someone who's uh, small, they're just starting up and they have 
a thousand dollars or two thousand or five hundred is that too small i mean it's if they have five hundred or a thousand dollars is that too small to kind of get some direction no because you know everyone starts somewhere and everyone's always a solopreneur starting out too Mm -hmm. you know everyone starts at the beginning unless you're employing your sisters and cousins and all that for free (laughs) usually right you're by yourself at the beginning you know so there's going to be some sweat equity but can you use it smartly Uh, if you've got five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars you can smartly set up your social media for free. You can even set up your own website mm-hmm. decently. I've built my own ADS website for off the, people talk about shoestring. I mean, this is less than a shoestring. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're really building it yourself. Um, it's all that's possible. And that's what's so great about technology today mm-hmm. is it allows that flexibility. Right. So if you are willing to learn a couple things, can you make that $500 really stretch? Right. But can they come to you with that kind of a budget? Oh, yeah. Well, so I'm working on a platform <laughs> right now that used to not be able to. It might not get you too far. It might right. get you like a nice consultation. Mm-hmm. It might get you some clarity around the path forward and some direction. And then you might be able to check in, you know, here and there and say, okay, how's this, how's this going? What do I need to do next? Right. Kinds of like, I call that That's like a good. coaching level, uh-huh. you know, like. I can't do everything for you (laughs) for that amount of money, but can I guide you and give you some feedback um, and help you figure out, yes, no, this is the way to go. It's not Um, having someone who is an expert, you know, whether that's me or not um, in this space is so valuable, even just to have like the sounding board for it. Someone Mm -hmm. to bounce, you know, because you are often by yourself. So having somebody there who can say, that's great. No, it's not. Let's try this. Mm -hmm. um, is so great. And so, yeah, even even at that level, um, that's good. But I'm also working on, uh, which you're officially my friend now, so <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm working on a package for small business owners, and I and I want people to try it out and let me know what they think about it and if they think it's helpful or not. Um, but specifically for that reason, you know, if you're a startup um, and you're trying to get it figured out for the first time, or maybe this is a new venture in a new space, mm-hmm. um, I'm working on a package where it's not ready yet. But um, you can potentially do like some online courses. Um, You can be in like a small community where you can get one-on-one help um, here and there throughout the month for the projects you're putting on for yourself, for your own marketing and branding. Um, You know, and here and there, if you've got questions, you've got someone you can ask. But the courses really help you DIY a lot of it smartly. Mm -hmm. You know, what, how do you do it? Because that's just what a lot of people just don't know. They've never had to do it before. But if they just had a little right. you know, guidance and direction. Mm-hmm. Just to set off the light bulb. Yeah, it's yeah. enough to be dangerous. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, what, that's what most people need. They okay. just need enough to get the sales going. And, you know, and then that's the idea is to grow you to the point where you can bring on the full-time agency and they can grow with you as you keep towards your million dollar path <laughs> and everything because <laughs> that's what we want everybody to be they need everybody needs to be headed towards that million right, dollar ex- path absolutely i agree wholeheartedly <laughs> <laughs> um uh, well before we close there are healing questions that i like to ask every guest and so i want to ask you when do you and some of this you touched on before uh, but I'm going to ask you again and uh, in a different way when well how would you describe your knowing or your perception of God? My knowing or perception of God. Ooh, ooh, that's (laughs) good. Um, How I would describe it is an absolute peace and joy. It feels like in those moments when you're connecting, I do feel like, um, you know, you and I were talking in the background earlier about, uh, I do feel like I'm downloading Mm-hmm. from the divine in my in my meditation it was so powerful like it will move you to tears sometimes just knowing in this moment I'm taking time to connect um, with my creator you know who made me and he created this day for me and he is so interested to see um, how I'm going to go about my day and the people I interact with and the choices I choose to make um, how I can bring a sense of light ideally to whomever I meet and show love to whomever I come across, Mm -hmm. um, bring excellence, um, and some brilliance, you know, that he instilled in all of us, bringing my own bit of that to every meeting and thing I touch throughout the day. Um, it's also like him touching something throughout the day through me. And so those, to me, that's what it is. It's a 
it's a power. God is a power uh, that is within us. And and taking those moments to connect there um, reminds you of that. And those that's when I feel him the most Mm -hmm. is when I'm still enough where I can feel that presence. Uh, Because we don't always when we're so busy and we're just, you know, we get into the drum of our day. um, We're not really always connecting. Yeah. You know, with the exception of, you know, where like you lost your keys and you were like, let me pause. You know, like (laughs) I feel like that was God telling you like, calm down, calm down. You know, (laughs) But uh, those moments when we can get still uh, is when I feel that presence the most. And it's all of those wonderful things at the same time. It's like light. I imagine downloading literally from the heavens, entering my head and then infiltrating every part of my body mm-hmm. and being, um, and healing things along the way and reminding me that you are love. And if you remember you are love and you can bring that to your relationships today, like how much more will your will the world blossom? Absolutely, because you're doing that. Absolutely, um, so that's what it feels like. This is such a long way today <laughs> to say it's power and everything good. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful, and uh, it's bringing to mind. I was, uh, I think it was Easter Sunday. I went to a friend's house. Uh, she had a get together in the mountains, and where her home was located or is located. When I got there, I was so. Uh, startled by the quiet Mm. I was so startled by it it was beautiful and it it gave me like this awareness of how of the layers you know it gave me an awareness of the peace inside of us Mm. and that we have these layers on top of that that obscures it yes (laughs) yeah yeah it does um, it can block that peace mm-hmm. and block that joy. Um, and but it is, but it's inside. It is there. Yeah, but we we don't realize it a lot of times. And that's why I think it's so important to work on accessing it. Yeah, because the more we can do that, the easier it is for us to find it in any moment. You know, throughout your day, um, versus when, it, when we neglect <laughs> accessing <laughs> right. it, it's a lot harder. Right, and right, you're like, right. Yeah, God is somewhere. <laughs> Not here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, what do you think God calls you to do for others in your work? I think I really do think it is, um, you know, that little superpower he's given me so far. Mm -hmm. Um, And I and I do think if there weren't such a thing as marketing, which is not true. I mean, it's always marketing. But if there weren't such a thing as marketing, it would be something else. But it would be that uh, ability to walk into a chaotic situation and God knows merger acquisitions are the most chaotic ever. Uh-huh. They're the most chaotic. Oh my gosh, you're dealing with people's emotions. They don't know if they're going to lose their job or not. And they're and you're working with them, trying to get them to get mm-hmm. to your goals too. Um, I think that is one of the gifts I've been given is to be able to walk into a situation like that clearly, so calmly. I remember one time some lady was like, she was like, I don't understand how you're so calm right now. She's like, you know, she, I think she'd be happier if she saw me freaking out and, <laughs> you know, pulling my hair out. Like she was, I think she felt that was expected in that moment to mm-hmm. be like that. Um, and I've never been like that. It's always been that everything's going to be okay mm-hmm. feeling, even when you get an initial gut punch of something, um, that immediate drawback to knowing it's always going to be okay, mm-hmm. which is true. Um, but yeah, I think that that's my calling is being able to walk into situations like that for people and say, everything's going to be okay. And let's figure out where we're going next. Mm-hmm. That's a wonderful gift. <laughs> <laughs> that is a wonderful gift. Um, is there a time or circumstance that you remember that was a complete blessing that you had nothing to do with it. It was completely God did that, that you're willing to share. I totally think the Scotland thing was, was one of the big God did that things. Mm-hmm. Um, because who am I, little brown girl, no one cares about potentially um, new to new back on the scene in Columbia, South Carolina, even though we a little bit grew up there, but no one knew me like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they knew my parents, not not me, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, and I'm just here almost for a job. 
And just because of small things other people saw in me that I didn't even see in me yet. Um, because of those things, it is now with the, with the 2020 hindsight, I can look back on it and say that was really God pulling me into that situation and saying, you know what? You're not really here for that guy. The guy was here to bring you here. Mm -hmm. You're really here for this new assignment because this is going to give you the experience mm -hmm. that is now becoming the springboard for your business that you don't even know you're going to start <laughs> yet. You know, and it's all those things, you know, you look back on it, you're like, God, it's so amazing. Yes. Like <laughs> he knows all that well before, years before you know it. Um, and granted, we've got some free will and we have choices to make along the way, but it's very clear what you can see going back, what his intentions were. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, for me, that was like, I told you, I was like, I shouldn't even be applying for this. Mm -hmm. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Why would anybody choose again, you know, little brown girl, because no, one is not a lot of, there's not a lot of brown people in that <laughs> no. company. Um, yeah. And definitely not. There were 6,000 employees. There are only 49 marketers um, globally. And they chose me, pulled me over, and then I got to be over 70 different brand ambassadors in 17 different countries. There's no mm -hmm. reason in the world that should have happened mm -hmm. other than God saying, I want you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. End. Absolutely. Uh, there's this uh, YouTube of uh, Denzel Washington giving this graduation speech like years ago. Uh, I want to say 2012. I'm not... I, I'm getting the year wrong, probably. And so the end of the speech is on the clip. It's not a long speech. And he says um, that the passion in the, the, that, that thing you feel in your heart, that's a confirmation from God that that's real and true. And so he says, um, say thank you to God for what's already yours. And I, um, I just keep that. I do that. I literally talk about grateful. I literally do that. Say thank you for what's already mine that I might, I might not be aware of. And yeah. I think that's what you're, what was going on with you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. You know, you just don't know. But that's why I'm writing a book all about this now because Are the you? experience was so amazing uh -huh. to go through. And I want other people to realize that, you know, if a crazy situation comes your way, you know, maybe you should say no, you know, for, you know, sometimes fear is good. It keeps us alive. But, <laughs> um, you know, maybe you shouldn't go home with that guy. You know, it's probably not uh -huh. good. Exactly. But sometimes it is good to say yes to some of those crazy doors brought before you to walk through. Mm -hmm. And if you say yes, these are the things that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you both, uh, I'd like to ask people if they're a seeker or a healer. Uh, would you say that you're both or are you one more than the other? I don't even know how, how you define healer. Probably seeker. Mm-hmm. You know, just on face value, what those words mean to me, I would say seeker. Um, I think I'm, I think that is a growth area for me to learn how to heal others. I think, you, I think to heal, you have to have such immense, uh, this is just me, I, girl, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like to heal, you have to have such immense power of love within you to be able to spill over that much to someone else to do healing. Well, you have that. <laughs> <laughs> you have that for sure. So maybe so. Exponentially. So <laughs> maybe maybe the book will be a, the first stab at <laughs> uh -huh. you know, kind of exercising those powers. But for sure, Seeker, not always been the best Seeker, but I think definitely that. And yeah, maybe healing in your own way. So we'll call it 80-20. <laughs> okay. Well, so before we close, how can people reach you? Yeah, so um, two ways. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to connect with my business side, it's the ADS Agency Everywhere. So that's T H E A D S, like ads, like advertising. Uh -huh. It's also my initials, Andrea D. Smith uh, Agency, the ADS Agency on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, all that good stuff. Um, 
And then if you want to connect with me personally, it's Miss ADS08 everywhere. M-I-S-S-A-D-S-08. Um, and for the Scotland book stuff, it's the new stuff is A.D. Smith writes. So um, if you want to follow that journey, it's A.D. Smith writes. Oh, is, is that a blog or what is that? That's um, on just social media handles right now, but it does have a blog too. Oh, Don't good. It? Yeah. Good, good, good. And that's going to become a book. Yeah. Okay. That's really exciting. I'm excited. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I have enjoyed this me very too. much. Me too. Yeah. I'm so glad we did this. Me Thanks too. so much for having thank me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Remember, you can listen to all of our episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and our podcast YouTube channel. Remember also to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and send me that email at Let's Start Healing Podcast at gmail.com. Let's start healing.